Music Business What Is This is a podcast that focuses on the ever-changing music industry and presents issues and concerns that the average and above average musician has or will encounter. Hey everybody, I'm Richard Johnson. Thanks for joining us today. This is Music Business What Is This? Today we're going to be talking with Mr. Casey Green, an amazing artist, graphic design. He does logos, websites, everything you can think of, but ultimately it's about graphic design. So we're going to be talking about what he does in perspective to the musician. All right. So Casey, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. I've uh, been in design Mm -hmm. for my entire life, but basically a professional for 20 plus years, Uh, basically starting from doing events parties, we call them events now, sounds yeah, a little events. better, <laughs> uh, to work on, like you said, like logos, websites, evolving into uh, to apps. So uh, brand has always been consistent. What is your brand from beginning to end? Mm-hmm. It's not always a logo. You mentioned a logo. It's not mm-hmm. always a logo. It's an entire brand. Okay. So you have to look at your color palette, your, your fonts, a serif or sans serif, uh, and when the applications are going to be used. Okay. So let's, let's just break a couple of those things down that you've mentioned. Because you've talked about a lot in, in, in <laughs> those couple phrases. So for musicians, the first thing we think of is logos. But is there something we should be considering prior to even a logo? Because you said brand. What, right. what does that mean? What does that mean specifically to an artist? So when you look at when I say brand, mm-hmm. you want to look at who am I? Who am I trying to target? Um, and where where is this going to be applied to? So if you're, let's say, artist X. Um, you may not need a logo yet. You may look at what is my color palette going to be? Am I going to be printing shirts? Am I going to be on screen on linear TV? Mm -hmm. Um, Or is it going to be on YouTube? How am I going to be represented across all of these uh, social platforms? So we'll say blue. I'm always going to use blue and the family of blues. That's Mm -hmm. always going to represent me. Okay. And then maybe as you evolve, you say, now I need a logo. I need to be artist X. So you would say think about the color scheme first. Think about the color scheme and the platforms. Platforms. Now, most artists say, well, I want every platform, Mm -hmm. even though it may not be necessary. How does the colors affect the platform? Like, or does it? It does affect it. Um, If you look at YouTube, what colors are going to stand out on your thumbnails? Mm. Um, Before the artist even watches, the user even watches what you have on there. Gold and yellow stands out a lot. A lot of people are starting to use that. And what do I have to say on there? A thumbnail may not tell the story, entice me to click on it. Mm, okay. So you may need to say, what are you What are you playing? Mm. Jazz, you know, this is the number I'm playing jazz. Or this time I'm playing classical. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be part of my brand. Mm. Um, and the fonts, like I said earlier, okay. is you're always going to use a serif font to represent what you're playing. You don't want to jump back and forth with font so you want to have a consistent story consistent font right and that's not to say you can't change right as time goes on or you start to get feedback like that's not reading well or it's too small Mm -hmm. when it's on the thumbnail you shouldn't use a font it'll say eight point you're not going to be it's not going to be legible Mm -hmm. so it's not saying you're stuck here once you make that commitment Mm -hmm. you need to stay with it you can evolve but try and be consistent Mm -hmm. for the time you're using it and that's for recognition for yeah, for uh, recognition when people see it, like, oh, this is this artist X. Mm-hmm. I know I've seen that before, mm-hmm. um, and I liked what they were playing before, or I like what they spoke about. Mm-hmm. So it's you're building an audience. Mm-hmm. So you think the musician should know what that font is, or at least ask the designer. Ask the or, designer, yeah. um, and show examples. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen this before, and it doesn't always have to be an artist that you're looking at that you want to mimic that okay, artist. Right, right. It could be it can outside. Be, I can tell people all the time, mm-hmm. like, what's your favorite car? What kind of car represents your brand? Mm. Um, it could be, you know, XYZ car, like, oh, I like the way it rides. It's very right, consistent. Right. It's smooth. Or I want to be an off-road. You know, I'm a little rough around okay, the edges. Okay, so you're drawing a comparison to a car or a machine, and so mm-hmm. you can take those same ideals and yeah. use them for you as an artist. Yes. For your branding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when any artist, most artists, designers, graphic designers, when they're working with a musician Mm -hmm. or any type of client, you want to create a mood board. A mood mood board? Mood board. Mood board. M-O-O-D. Okay. (laughs) M-O-O-D. Right. Mood. Yes. So all this on the mood board represents this artist, this client, Um, the colors, uh, the fonts, the feel of it. Mm. You're like, okay, this is 
what my design should come back to. It should relate to this move board. This is what we selected. This is the type of car, this type of font. These are the type of colors. So when I look at this, this logo, this logo uh, typography, it mm -hmm. might just, it might not be a solid logo or mark that you think of. It might be this typography that represents this artist. It should all come back mm, to the move it board. It should all be related. Right. So when someone comes to you and they say, hey, come up with a idea or I don't want to say logo. I mean, that's part of it. Yeah. What, what goes through your mind? Like, what are the first questions that you would ask um, a college or university student? Why? Why do you think you need a logo? What's why are you saying you need a logo? Maybe you don't need a logo yet. Mm -hmm. You need to have a consistency of this is what my name is. I want to make sure I'm consistent when I when people see this name, that it's me. Mm hmm. Is the logo your name or you have another, you go stage name. Like RJ Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> so how is that going to, how mm -hmm. does that need to look? Right. Um, is RJ Jazz different from Richard Johnson mm -hmm. or is it the same? Um, mm -hmm. And you have to ask a lot of questions. Right, and right. sometimes you have to do it in a way the client doesn't get upset. You're like, just give me a logo. Just right, give me right. a logo. Well, you'll see that a lot. And that's why I'm asking. Yeah. They just want to get to the end. Right. I want to get to the finish line, but we have to do all this training. Mm -hmm. before we can get on the mark and run the race and get mm -hmm. to the finish line, we need to get, we need to get everything right up front. Um, so you don't have to revisit the logo or like, this doesn't work when I do it at a thumbnail size. Oh, so you don't miss anything. Yeah. So you're asking questions on the front end. So you don't have to make up stuff or you miss something on the back right. end. So when you get everything delivered, like this is everything I need mm -hmm. and it might be more, which is good. Right. 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 Um, but you want to think about everything. How is this logo going to look? at a, a thumbnail size, we'll say that that's like, it could be like 50 by 50 pixels. Mm -hmm. Probably more information. A lot of people need to know how many pixels something right, is, right. but you need to understand when it's scaled down, is it going to be legible? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Or, or if it's blowing up, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. When it's blown, it needs to be clean. It needs to be not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and different weights may not work when it's blown up. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at all that. Different weights? Weights of the font. Like you might have bold or extra bold mm. at a, a smaller size. Mm. And then when you blow it up on screen, like that's overwhelming. Oh, it looks too. OK. Yeah. It's good to know. It looks bloated. Yeah, because I've done the little work I can do. I, when I some things look good at one size and I blow it up and I'm like, this just looks horrible. <laughs> yeah. And you see that on delivery. Like this is your logo at a normal size, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And then I always deliver this is 50 percent. Mm -hmm. We scale the logo down and then go down to like a quarter size. This is what it is at 25%. Um, and at that point, the designer should know that it works here mm -hmm. or they should offer other suggestions. So mm -hmm. when it gets down to your 25%, maybe you don't have RJ Jazz. Maybe it's just RJ. RJ. Oh, okay. Or you have a mark going mm -hmm. back to like your logo mm -hmm. that you can at 100%, you can have them both. Uh -huh. RJ and RJ Jazz at 50%, maybe it's just RJ, not the mark on top. But mm -hmm. at 25%, it's just what your mark is. Mm -hmm. But you have that consistency, that common thread throughout. Okay. So um, do you think a student or a person who has no idea should come prepared with a list of questions to help the designer or, or have thought about it? Is it better to have the questions and answers prepared and a product like a car or a TV, or is one better than the other? Or what would make your job the easiest? <laughs> and not easy, but yeah, you know. think through some of these. Um, and it may not be like the car thing example I brought up. You may not mm -hmm. think about that, but I want to. I want to look good on my when I put things on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, when I put things on social, what am I going to look like? This is what I think I want, mm -hmm. but you let me know what I need. Okay. Um, it could even be like a, a show you're putting on. You want to have the lower thirds. How does that work? Um, and then you have vertical and horizontal. Most people mm, it's are like you and horizontal. Pictures on your camera. Like you want it vertical yeah. or horizontal. Because on social, it's nine. <coughs> it's vertical. Mm -hmm. I'm getting this. <laughs> right. It's vertical. <laughs> so you have to think some things you have to the left or right are going to get cut off. Mm -hmm. Or the logo you have in mind or something you, you're presenting isn't going to fit. It's going to get cut off. Mm -hmm. um, or it's taking up too much of the real estate. Mm -hmm. So some of those things you're not going to think of as an artist or a young artist seeing they want a logo. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to be walk them through that as the designer, walk the artist through that, the young artist, Mm -hmm. like this is what I want. Okay, so when you're designing, um, I'm sure artists, musicians have come to you and say, hey, design this for me. You take what do you take into account when designing this website or logo or blah, blah, blah for this person Mm -hmm. that makes it different than the next person? I think it's uh, for most projects, whether it's a designer or another client, like a musician or another client. Mm -hmm. Give me everything, all the information, whether you think I need it or not. Mm. Um, And when you say all the information, what is that information? Information like I have a website that's getting designed. I have an event that's going on or a conference that's going to be designed. But I just need you to work on this one thing. Mm -hmm. Like I would like to be consistent just so I know what's going on to help direct the design, the final output. So you don't look at what I'm designing. It's like, oh, that doesn't look consistent to the conference or another event you're doing. Like that doesn't look consistent. It looks like another person completely. It mm. might be the same name, right? Right. But they look completely different. Okay. So you want to have that consistency, and that falls back to what's your font, what's your your color palette, mm-hmm. um, and so you want that information. Like I said, give me all of it, mm-hmm. so I can massage everything. Figure like, okay, this is going to work here. This isn't going to work. Or have you thought about this? Mm-hmm. Um, as an artist, you may not be thinking. You're thinking about what do you have to play? Right. 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 And I have to meet this delivery. Get these assets over. But maybe not looking forward. How is this going to work? So um, a musician who comes to you, it helps when they're open to ideas. I mean, because like they're supposed to be focusing on their instrument. But of Mm -hmm. course, we all see these things we like in public on stage, a big concert. So and so's got this logo. But that's what you do. So you're making suggestions to help clear up or present their vision. Mm -hmm. Right. And think about when. You might have an event coming up and they're creating a poster. Someone else is designing it. Mm-hmm. Like you should make sure they have these assets for, you know, whoever's creating this, just deliver this. This is your font. This is your your um, style guide. So mm-hmm. if anyone else is going to create something for you, let's keep using RJ Jazz. Right, right. Um, like this is everything you need. These so they should have what? Are you talking about like JPEG, EPS? Yeah. Yeah. Color palette. This is everything. Color palette. Okay. These so- are the colors and whichever format you're going to use it. If you need the RGB, CMYK, mm-hmm. this is the, um, the hex code. If you're using it for web, mm-hmm. this is everything you need. So it's consistent. You're giving them everything. You're giving them the full toolkit. Mm-hmm. Um, so you think about that. And even if you're a young artist and you're just using your name, it's nice to have just like that one cheat mm-hmm. of this is how I want to be presented. If you're going to use my my name on a poster, mm-hmm. this is how I want it to look. Wow. I didn't even know that. I I I got some work to do myself. <laughs> you know, I have things in places, pieces and bits. But This is like perfect, perfect scenario. Mm-hmm. So you have timelines that are always going to dictate. You might not have that. Right. Right. Um, or budget. Like, look, I just need this one thing. Like, OK, here's what you asked for. Mm-hmm. But maybe you should consider these five, six things moving forward or after you get to this to this point mm-hmm. where you, what you need. But maybe you come back to me and I'll deliver these rest, the rest of these assets for you. Mm. Okay, that's that's a lot of information, even for me. I just usually say, I want this, here you go. And then the emails start flying with the questions. <laughs> um, but that's also good, cut, sorry to cut you yeah, off, no, when you're working with one designer, it's nice to work with one designer that you don't need to start from the beginning every time. Mm-hmm. You can say, I need something, but okay, I already know the brand. I have all the assets here. Right, right. And then I can deliver it to you. Hmm, I can see. I can see. That's like it's like a musician working with their band. It's nice when you have your cats in the group. You don't mm-hmm. have to be re really explaining the same charts, the same music. You can just show up and hit. They know how you work. Yeah. I've seen a few examples of that. And it's it's <laughs> <Right>. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Green has had the privilege to work on several different projects and music, different television programs, series, jazz recordings, all different types of things. So he's. Um, been had his hands in several different pockets so he really understands and i've seen him around so these things he's communicating are are very important no matter whether it's jazz country hip-hop funk um if you're trying to get to that level which we all are we want to make good money we want to be in the business you're going to need these things at some point now like he said you may not need them immediately like the logo right but you may want to be thinking about these things and have them in the back of your mind or take notes, put them in your phone. 
So when it comes time to do that, Mm -hmm. you're not necessarily searching around for something. Right. And like you say, you don't need you may not need everything at once. Mm -hmm. You can build you can build on it. Um, And that's important to know this is where you started. This is what I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And this is part of my brand using this font, this color. Now I just want to add to it a little bit more. It's like adding on to a home. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. When someone asks you to design something, do you have ideas already? So let's say I come to you and I say, I'm a hip hop artist. I want you to take my letter Q and make it hip hop ish. Because I'm sure you hear people say things like that. Like as a designer, does that put you in a certain frame of mind? Um, because a lot of people don't know these terms that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah because I, I'm, I'm asking because I hear as a musician, I hear this all the time. Oh, well, we want something that's kind of jazzy, but it's got a really nice hip hop flavor. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, that is so vague. And that's not really going to help. And usually for me, the first thing I say is, can you send me over some examples? <laughs> that's the same thing with mm-hmm. design. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at? What? What's speaking to you? What designs mm-hmm. are speaking to you? And talking about a phrase that you hate jazzy. Mm-hmm. I hate when someone says, I just need a sexy logo. <laughs> I don't know what sexy, sexy is, to, is you. to you. Right. <laughs> sexy to everyone is different. different. Mm-hmm. Um, but you try and I try not to come into any situation with a client with a preconceived notion of what they want. What? Right. I don't have all the information. Mm-hmm. So if you want a <laughs> hip hop logo, OK, why do you need a hip hop logo? Mm-hmm. What's going to separate you from other artists? Um, what makes you special? Hmm. So asking those type of questions and taking those notes can help you get to what's going to represent that artist. So whenever you see this logo, like, oh, that's that hip hop artist. I know who they are. Hmm. You don't want them to look at a logo and be like, that looks like this rapper over here. Right, or this right, MC. right, right. Like you don't want that. You don't yeah, want that vibe. Exactly, exactly. And asking like all the applications. Mm-hmm. I don't want to pre- make a preconceived notion that you want a, a chain. You want a dope chain as mm-hmm. a as a, a, a artist, a, a rapper, MC. But you have to think about that. How could that be applied to that? Mm-hmm. And even doing uh, a mock-up to get the artist, the, your client, to understand this is how it could look. Mm-hmm. Like a chain, a t-shirt, um, your apparel if you're doing concerts, if you're doing festivals. Mm-hmm. This, doing this, this, t-shirts, yeah, hats. This is how it can work. This, this You can see people, feel people, mm-hmm. how your, uh, your logo would work. Mm-hmm. So generally, what's the best way to approach someone in your position. So let's say a college senior is about to graduate and they say, okay, I'm getting out here in the real world. I have to find a designer. What should they look for? Their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Um, What kind of work have they done in the past? And it's always going to come down to budget too. So you want to have a nice balance. This is what I can spend on a brand. Mm -hmm. um, And I like their work this artist's work, I've looked at their portfolio, I've had a conversation with them, and they understand what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, And they may not have a great portfolio, you just like the way they communicate and you have that ease of communication with them and and have and confident on what they can deliver you. Mm -hmm. Um, But look, you have to look at their previous work. It's like if you're looking at someone to play with you. Yeah, you gotta see what they sound like, what they've done. And you might have to like take a leap, like they have potential. I heard something there. Yeah. And it had potential. Yeah, that reminds me. One time I was in the Middle East, and um, it was the beginning of a new se- season, and I, this drummer was recommended to me. And I heard a couple things online, but usually I like to hear somebody live or mm-hmm. just so I can really see and hear what's going on. But at this point, it was coming down to the wire, and I asked a couple of my buddies. I said, "Hey, man, I need somebody. I you are sure who can deliver." And I got this mm-hmm. one guy's name and I said, I'm, I'm trusting this goes great. And he came over and he killed it. So I, I reached out and thanked those guys. But normally I would be like, this wouldn't happen, but someone canceled. So I, I, I lucked out in that situation. All right. Take a leap of faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I had to do my homework. So if you had to give one piece of advice to a graduating senior about everything we've talked about today. What would that piece of advice be? Do your research um, and don't think you need a logo. Think about your brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't want to commit to a logo. I'm like, that's just not me. 
Um, it's better to not have one in the. It's commit better to not have one and just do typography and have your name like oh, this looks good. I'm going to use all caps or I'll use all lowercase. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'm going to use a serif or a cent, like the type of font you want to use. Mm-hmm. And like get comfortable with it first. Mm-hmm. You don't need to jump off the deep end. And be like this is my logo. This mm-hmm. is my brand. Right, right, right. Five years later, it might not work for you. Ten years later, be like oof. <laughs> that just right. doesn't work. Yeah, it's, things change with time. Yeah, you can evolve. A lot mm-hmm. of companies do it. And look at yourself as you're a company. You're oh, a that's a good piece of advice. You are a company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, great. Um, do you have a website or email or anything you'd like to put out there? Well, Wait for people, my... Instagram or how should do people find? You remember all these, these <laughs> right? All these now. different social media um, platforms. It's easy to go to my website. Okay. K C E Green. Beautiful. K A C E Y. E G R E E N E. Well, you got to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Beautiful. Well, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad that we had this amazing artist talk to us about what he does and how it affects the music industry. I'm Richard Johnson. As always, this is Music Business. What is this? And we will see you in the next podcast. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council Agency.